Uh, all right, let's do this one. Let's start with this. There's a small volcanic His island off the so southern beautiful. coast of Japan. Yeah, he's so Bakushima. good at editing. I always, you, you always got to hand it to him, okay? Nobody lives here. But here's footage from January 2023 of construction workers arriving to this island. Their task is to build a couple of runways on the island and some storage facilities for ammunition. The Japanese government has been paying local fishermen to stay away from this island. That's because they're turning it into a military base. The island is being built by Japan, but one of its main purposes... Which is very cool and good. Um, <laughs> I sure hope China's not doing that. Because if they are doing that, oh, then no. that's not cool and not good. Not good. Not good or nor. It has to do with the United States. American fighter jets and aircraft carriers have had to do their drills and practices down here on this island. What? But now so they're far able away. to station at this island, moving them much closer to this ocean and to one country in particular. China. Magashima is just one of many islands that are being loaded up with military hardware, most of it coming from the United States. It's part of this chain of militarized islands, an effort of defense militarized or islands. aggression, depending on how you look at it. It's a line that centers on Taiwan. And it's what one official was referring to when they said that 2023 is likely to stand... By the way, Janet Yellen is uh, currently in China today talking to them about God knows what. And as the most transformative year in U.S. force posture in this region in a generation. This line is a symbol of the rising tensions between global superpowers. And I want to show you why this is happening now and what it means for the future of this conflict. This is unlike anything the U.S. Navy has done since World War II. Tensions are rising in one of the most hotly contested regions on the planet, the South China Sea. <laughs> Why? Why? Why is it one of the most hotly contested places on the planet? A question we must ask ourselves. Like, I'm sorry. I always have to ask. Why is America there? <laughs> like, no, I know that we, we, we have this attitude where, like, of course we have to be there to preserve freedom, right? But it's like, but why are we there, really? What, what's up with that? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Hey, I'm um, going to pause the story really quick to tell you Ed's about BetterHelp.com. Better help. Back into this important story. Here we go. There would be tension without the U.S., though? No, there wouldn't. <laughs> what? No, there wouldn't. <laughs> Look, islands just militarize themselves, you know. Okay, Eventually. so this document from the U.S. Department of Defense... This document is called the National Defense Strategy of the United States of America, which also includes the Nuclear Posture Review and Missile Defense Review. It's basically a report that they release every four years that gives us an understanding of what the U.S. military is up to, what they care about. Like, like China and who would have tension without the U.S.? Imagine no U.S. involvement in that region. Who... Who, what, what, you think the Filipinos are going to rise up against the Chinese or something? Like, what, what do you think is going to happen? Motherfuckers be like, Japan, really? Okay. Like, current day Japan? No, we're not talking about India, okay? We're talking about that part of the world. China is massive, so obviously uh, there's tension on all sides. But, but even then, even with India. But this year's is more detailed than normal. The document focuses a lot on China. If China threatens our sovereignty, concerns directly with China. The DOD says that China, quote, remains our most consequential strategic competitor for coming decades. Why? Because, the Pentagon says, China is bullying its neighbors to, quote, reshape the region huh. and the international system to fit its authoritarian preferences. Now, remember, <laughs> the United States, who spends loads on its military, has yeah, set they the- just hate democracy. That's what That's... it, fuck. I was thinking like, what is China trying to do? Oh, they're trying to they're stop, just... stop the Indian democ the Indian democratic process from, Taking root, or uh, the 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 
Philippines. Philippines. <laughs> the Filipino demo- democratic process from from maintaining its uh, a blossoming democracy. Or I think just the idea of a Filipino person voting is just like so hard to deal with for for a yeah. Person. They just it's they just, hate that, dude. Fuck it, Japan. The, the democratic process in Japan, like a <laughs> one <party>. functionally <laughs> one party state that America designed. Okay, like. It's always funny to think about these countries. Like, I love Japan. You guys know this is not a fucking, uh, you know, it's not a meme. But let's be real. Like, these are all client states. Client states with an effectively one-party uh, form of governance that that you would never consider a democracy by, like, Western standards. You know what I mean? Anyway, it's just... Ay, ay, ay rules for our global order, how we trade, what political systems we favor, who participates in the system. And now we see a country that wants to dethrone them to create a new system based on other values and other rules. Yeah. Unlike. And what scares the US military is that China is rapidly modernizing and expanding their military. China's military is growing incredibly fast. Like they deploy the equivalent of an entire new British Navy every four years. Every four years, it's like What's new, the British, new Navy, British Navy, though, like new a... Royal Navy every four years. Yeah, they're just growing very quickly. This report is concerned about China's growing strength and military footprint. Again, we're scared of Chinese military footprint growing because they're growing and have a defensive posture against who? Against American client states and American, American the American Navy that's there, okay? Thousands of miles away from the U.S. coastline. What the fuck? Wait, there aren't any, there aren't any big American cities in China? <laughs> I thought there was like a, some military. Well, where's Denver? <laughs> yeah, it's just like, I mean, it's, it might as well be China. It might as well be uh, in in uh, China. It's uh, close. Uh, 881 bases around the planet. Yeah, I mean, technically, if you consider it that way, uh, China yeah. is bordering the United States yeah. of America. Those bases if you like think about every- Taiwan as like an American base, then, you know, all of a sudden, things get real spicy. How China is coercing its neighbors. Disregarding ocean boundaries, (laughs) testing missiles, bullying fishing vessels in other countries. Like, this entire video is only we get to do that. And not even in our backyard, which we already did that. But other people's backyards, we get to do that in. And you can't do that. Countries' waters, building islands and military bases on those islands. China's building islands. And flying over other countries' airspace. And especially in Taiwan. I knew it. The island that China claims as their own and where the globe gets nearly all of their advanced microchips. Which is a topic I made an entire... Okay, to be fair, yeah, as, as Alexa also pointed out, it's not just China that claims that uh, it is uh, Chinese. It's uh, the United States of America that also has maintained that same position since motherfucking Nixon, which is a position that they have routinely lied about. And it's not just me saying this. Like This is very clearly the American foreign policy... The very clear American foreign policy has always been it's it's China. It has a it has some level of autonomy from China, but they call it strategic ambiguity where uh, they were not supposed to well, from its inception as an anti-communist uh, military dictatorship that was like completely psychotic all the way to the modern uh, democratic process that you see in Taiwan. Uh, America's position went from no, actually KMT, Taiwan, that is literally China, okay? And, like, the entire, uh, the entire uh, uh, the Western territory that is mainland China belongs to Taiwan, as a matter of fact, to, okay, never mind, maybe the, the communists aren't so bad. It quite literally is, uh, uh, you know, Taiwan is still China. It just has, like, a different system. And that has been our, that has been our position, it's like fifty percent of the vote in Taiwan often goes to the like legacy KMT guys who are still who still think they're China. Yeah, you know, like especially the the bigger and stronger China gets, it like tickles the these old nationalists. Yeah, but I mean that's like the overwhelming majority just don't want to rock the boat. I've looked yeah. into I've looked into polling in Taiwan on this issue quite a lot. Most people just say, "Listen, 
uh, yeah, we would prefer to be autonomous. We would prefer to be independent for sure. Like that's understandable. Um, but overall, the current system that we have is much better than what could potentially happen, which is uh, rocking the boat. Okay. No, most people just want the current system that they have is fine. Let's continue going uh, the way that we're going and, um, and not fuck this shit up. Uh, whereas, you know, Nancy Pelosi's like, I got some other ideas. Okay. I got some different ideas. I mean, but, and, and again. On Taiwan, I reiterated the longstanding U.S. one China policy. Uh, that policy has not changed. It's guided by the Taiwan Relations Act, the three joint communiques, the six assurances. We do not support Taiwan independence. We remain opposed to any unilateral changes to the status quo by either side. We continue to expect the peaceful resolution of cross-strait differences. I think China should just take Australia. Yes. I think China should be like, all right, uh, you can have Taiwan. Australia is ours. I mean, if you ask a lot of right-wing people in Australia, that's already happened. That, that has already China happened, can, right? Yeah. They why. did it through immigration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just uh, saying. China are in absolutely no Russia annex Taiwan or whatever is the U.S. who wants to provoke a conflict in the hope that they yeah. can somehow ruin the Chinese economy before it totally surpasses the American economy. That is correct. Well, yes. that's what that's what America has in the back is like a military strength. America like would never do that. Invade another country or no? Uh, agitate, uh, agitate like uh, any kind of uh, any kind of group of individuals that are in a position of power that they placed that would then go and and uh, try to drum up support and maybe create. Uh, any kind of like civil chaos or even all out war. They would never do that. They've never done that, historically speaking. And they certainly will never do that, surely. And aren't doing that in, in Taiwan while Anthony Blinken is like, uh, you know, one, one, one nation, two systems. Uh, do you We're much... committed to meeting our. Is there much pushback on it here? Like in, in Australia, it's like bipartisan. The anti-China stuff. Like you, you, oh, you can't dude. find anyone who's dude. It is super bipartisan here as well. Oh my lord, there we are always on a we're always on a like who fucking hates China more yeah, kick. Yeah. Like, like Joe Biden's like, no, I'll execute the Chinese. Just wait, Jack. And then and then Donald Trump's like, I've killed so many Chinese. <laughs> we hate them. D Donald Trump literally claims that Joe Biden because he had like some documents. Uh, in a in a facility in Chinatown, that mm. like he was actually working with the Chinese because he thinks Chinatown, which exists in like every fucking large American city. <coughs> Wait, what? <coughs> yeah, they're exactly. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere. Is technically Chinese. They think it's Chinese soil. Um, but this was shocking for a lot of people who have just like, who don't know anything about uh American Chinese relations or like America's foreign policy on China, but instead have just been like paying attention to uh, how uh, bad China is. So they're like genuinely shocked when they heard this. They were like, what? I can't believe Blinken reiterated like longstanding foreign policy <laughs> with China like this. What the fuck? Our video about. The point is Taiwan is an incredibly important island for the United States. All of this together makes China quote, the only country that has the intent and power to actually challenge the US-led global order and rewrite global rules and norms, something the US has gotten really comfortable doing over the last 70 years. So this is why the US considers China the most consequential strategic competitor for coming decades. And they've created a plan to respond. And in their words, we cannot delay. They give themselves this 10 year window to- I gotta start highlighting stuff changes. in my videos more. And this is what it looks like. Okay, first yeah, things first. The US military that. is already very present in Asia. We've got about 8,000 troops in Guam. We've got over 100 bases. Wait, what is this? By making a stance and say that we can stand with is Taiwan, we sh make sure that they stay democratic. China won't ever attack Taiwan, so this is good. Okay, you lost me there. Anytime you fucking claim that America is like legitimately defending, defending democracy, it's over. Okay, it's a wrap. I will never take you seriously. America does not give a single shred of a fuck about the democratic process. We don't even have a democratic process here in the United States of America. Have you seen the Senate? Have you seen the Electoral College? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's just completely about whatever their strategic interests are, okay? No, they do not. They fear multipolarity. That's it. That's literally it. Because it's not like, 
China is going to become the the single uh, force, uh, the the hegemonic power that the United States is. They don't have eight hundred fucking military bases around the world. They don't have the they don't have like their own version of a, a world war and then like the Marshall Plan post World War Two. You know what I mean? They can't do all of that. They don't have the fucking NATO. They don't even have an interest in it. You can say yet all you want. Yet. <laughs> Everything you're talking about. Yet. Yet. <laughs> but what if they do? Okay. I like you. I really do. But it's not good to actually be for their independence. I don't agree with the U.S., but by talking like this, you make it seem like you are pro-China. First of all, I am pro-China. Uh, okay. So make no mistake on that front. I am. I am pro-China. I do not mind multipolarity. I do not fear multipolarity. So on that front, I am definitely Pro China, as pro China as it gets. Like it's, less, oh, no, you go. No, you go. Go, go. No, no. They just, go, they, they just got an, an, a nicer track record in terms of wars. Like once they start doing more of them, maybe I'll maybe I'll be less pro China. But like, Fair. they've done like two, you know, in like seventy years. Chosen reservoir, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and one of them was glorious. Yeah, it was fucking <laughs> glorious. So, um. Jeez, your foreign policy, policy take is so bad. This is like the Crimea stuff in Hong Kong. You can't be a social... I know, Hong Kong is famously on fire. Yeah. You know, yeah. I always I always check in with Hong Kong to see how bad things are in Hong Kong. Because remember, they like, you know, when the when the Chinese took over, they were they executed everyone. Yeah. It was so crazy. It was it was wild. Um <clears throat> the only difference and the only thing that I do criticize China on is their lack of uh, their their lack of interest in uh, social libertarianism for sure. I think that I am significantly more uh, pro uh, civil liberties and pro freedom of speech than uh, the Chinese government is. And I don't even make the same uh, kinds of, uh, I would say, I don't even make the same kind of excuse that I would make for Cuba, an island that has been constantly under war for uh you know, their, their lack of interest in like, uh, uh, free speech. That is absolutely, that is absolutely something that I am uh, very critical on, uh, with respect to China, but Hassan being shocked that the normies in the chat really don't fuck with his foreign policy takes. No, I'm not shocked at that at all. This is like a big part of what differentiates me from a lot of other, uh, I would say left leaning, uh, left adjacent content creators in the United States of America. This is why they always say Hassan is so American centric. Um, is Hong Kong is no longer a democracy because of China. <laughs> it was so democratic. Yeah. Fuck. And then yeah, look, I know, look I know. What I know. <clears throat> now people are living in like tiny little cages in apartments. You know, like that. That wasn't a thing before. Um, Shot and Freud up. Our our Indian uh, chatter who is anti China says. You can't consider China here to be a harmless victim. Tibet happened. I mean, 1962 war happened. The recent Chinese attack on India happened. And they're just doing this for saber rattling. And they have, inter they have been interfering in politics in a lot of nations in the, in the neighborhood. And the reason isn't some stupid reason like spreading authoritarian system. They're just doing it. Their own Washington doctrine. I don't disagree with the, the last part about this, though. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they absolutely are. They do, they do have... Mm, how do I how do I put this gently? I think that it's not as expansionist in the same way that like American foreign policy is, but they they definitely are uh, engaging in. Also, if you're surrounded by American client states, you do have an interest in in how they turn out. Like, yeah, I mean, I've said this a lot about uh, regional powers. They're not superpowers, but regional powers always want to maintain uh, a level of control in surrounding regions. And obviously, the only way you can do that is if you are America's lapdog, like Turkey, for example. Look at what the fuck Turkey's doing in the northern Syrian corridor and understand that, like, that is totally allowed if you are a NATO country. Mm -hmm. That is totally allowed if America lets you do it. That's it. When, when uh, you are seen at odds with the United States of America's interests in the region, then you can't do that. Look at Israel. Israel's another example. Golan Heights is, again piece of syria that they like have been able to overtake it's it's not even it's not even in any fucking uh by any metric uh, israeli territory there's not there's nothing uh israel about that hassan do you think china is the bastion of progress more than the u.s no <laughs> that is what he's been saying <laughs> to be fair like, i have been <laughs> secretly uh <laughs> secretly i've i've been maintaining the the secret position that uh, china is the bastion of social progress 
Uh, all right, Bases let's keep in going. Japan with about 21,000 American troops on the mainland and another 24,000 stationed down here on the Japanese island of Okinawa. Go up to South Korea and you'll find 22,000 US troops. And then you've got the US Navy who operates out of this port in Singapore. This has been the status quo in Asia for decades. And it has been the way that the US has ensured security for its allies. And it's kind of mostly worked to help secure American interests and deter conflict. The US has maintained strong alliances in this region. And frankly, the Pentagon has kind of been distracted with- Yeah, look at all the saber rattling China. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? <laughs> But it's also funny, like, ensuring their security. It's like, they must be taken over by America to make sure they're safe from being taken over by someone else. Fuck, it's what's just... the what's the Navy... I, I, fuck, I think the American foreign policy position is literally considering Philippines... The Philippines as, like, an unmovable, like, like military cruiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a... they, they literally treat uh, the Philippines as, like... Uh, especially with, like, the recent elections and... Well, recent elections and, and uh, the oh, new well. form of governance in the Philippines, they... Uh, consider that to be the unsinkable, uh, the unsinkable aircraft carrier, uh, and and you know uh, it's wonderful. But yeah, they say an unsinkable aircraft carrier. That's what they consider it. But you know, it's not saber rattling. That's just ensuring that the client states have security. Other things, two wars that happened in the Middle East over the past twenty years. My fellow citizens, my fellow citizens, my fellow citizens. But as those conflicts wind down and as China militarizes, the Department of Defense says that this status quo, all of these troops in Asia, it's not enough. They talk about this new kind of deterrence, integrated deterrence, the only kind of military posture that will actually keep China at bay. And this is what it looks like. The smallest part of the strategy has to do with American bases. They're gonna reopen a base in Guam and move some troops there. But the majority of this strategy has to do with American allies in Asia, allies that are in lockstep with the US's goal to deter and contain China. The Pentagon calls partnering with its allies the center of gravity for this strategy. So let's start with Japan, one of the US's closest allies in the region. Japan is a country that is deeply concerned about a more powerful China with its massive Navy and its ambitions to control Taiwan. And it's very easy to <laughs> wait, forget. What is, why does Japan wait. care about Taiwan? <laughs> wait, what do you mean, dude? Like a <laughs> Japanese homeland of Taiwan. Yeah, no, they, they just, they, they care about it. Just don't worry about it. They right. care, they care. Maybe it's because well, Australia like, cares about it. So, like, if Australia feels enough of a connection to Taiwan, I'm sure Japan does. Yeah, they, they <laughs> dude, they care because they hate the undemocratic oh, yeah. Chinese rule. They were really critical of, uh, uh, like, the original Taiwan governance when, when it was just like a genocidal military dictatorship. They were like, ah. Oh, Taiwan, why are you doing this? Come on, have guys. have to contain you, Taiwan. Or yeah, else, that's or what they kept saying. <laughs> Same with South Korea, as a yeah, matter of fact. Yeah, when, yeah. It, when South Korea also was a <laughs> genocidal military dictatorship and then changed its uh, 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 structure of governance from that to uh, six Che balls in a, in a suit jacket, <laughs> which is, is, is very different now and, and totally, uh, again, very democratic. Well, they have an incel president, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. I do think that's cool to have like a guy who literally I ran on like, <laughs> yeah, women fucking suck, uh, candidacy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, important to note that the 11 dash line that he calls the Chinese claim is actually a claim that Taiwan also advances Lamau. Where, where is the, US's I didn't, closest ally. well, they, they also, there's a funny little trick that maybe me as a Turkish person, I am a little bit more aware of that. Like Western forces always utilize, um, they'll constantly say, you know, Taiwanese airspace and, you know, uh, China is flying on Japanese and Taiwanese airspace. And if you don't really pay attention to the map, you will look at that and go, oh, wow, that's really fucked up that they're flying in Taiwanese Over airspace Japan. until you fucking realize that it's literally the border. It's the fucking landmass. The Chinese landmass where it ends and the water begins is basically fucking not uh, Chinese airspace, according to... Uh, a lot of Westerners. Why am I saying this? Because they did the same thing with Turkey and Greece. Okay? There are a lot of circumstances where, uh, you know, there's a lot of, like, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, tricky situations with, like, the Turkish uh, 
the Turkish military and the the uh, Greek military constantly just like fucking around with one another. Because if you look at like the Turkish airspace, it's it's just it ends at the border where the landmass ends. Okay, I mean that's insane. That's an insane way to to operate. Okay, this was from uh, I think this was like the the airspace closed to against russia or something this was when there was a battle but like this is the fucking turkish airspace look at this does that make sense to you <laughs> taiwanese airspace <laughs> wait what the whole square no the line uh i don't know if this is where it ends i think it does i think it taiwanese airspace technically is is uh is is chinese landmass too and the Taiwanese fucking breathe a lot. The internet reporter, why is this Chinese... The theater that they say is armed with air-to-air -air missiles. And it's been shadowing this U.S. Navy plane now <laughs> for about 15 minutes. It is pretty remarkable to see this Chinese warplane operating at such close proximity. <laughs> several hundred feet away. Eleven. <laughs> It is interesting yeah. that China got so close to our plane. Yeah, what the fuck? The why are you just like moved towards where it, we it's were literally is like the why are you hitting yourself? But on a global scale, it's like, dude, what is your plane doing there? You know what I mean? We we understandably took care of a fucking balloon that was uh, that was Chinese that happened to fly over U.S. airspace because it caught like the wrong wind current, which we again openly admitted months later was not doing any kind of spy reconnaissance as i correctly told you at the time and everyone was like a song you don't know what the fuck you're talking about blah 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 it's like i'm like why would they do that they have satellites the best way to do actual reconnaissance is put fucking cameras if you want like up close and personal photographs of like i don't know some uh, military base dudes asshole hairs then you just strap cameras under a fucking low flying cessna or under a private jet Okay, you don't have to fucking literally uh, fly this like dumbass balloon that's like clearly visible. Okay, or just use, you know, the satellites that they have. <sighs> anyway, and remember what we did. We blew that shit up. Air defense identification zones in East Asia. Also, oh, the blue square is Taiwan. Yeah. There's like a huge chunk of... <laughs> what do you mean? There's nothing wrong with that. It's like they, they deserve that land. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So every... Is there not enough China for you that like they can't take some of it? Give some of China it's a pretty big country. to Taiwan. Yeah. It's a big country. Best part about that was that we shot missiles at a high school weather balloon after that. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's like the most American thing you can do is get like so schizophrenic about both aliens and also uh, a, a potential Chinese air assault that you start blowing up like weather balloon projects that uh, high schoolers have, have uh, made. Let's get back to the Johnny Harris video. Japan is a country that is deeply concerned about a more powerful China with its massive Navy and its ambitions to control Taiwan. And it's very easy to forget that Japan isn't just this. It's actually all of this. It extends way down here because of all these islands. These islands curve nicely all the way. <laughs> they aren't gonna watch it. They're just going to call him a tanky if they even know who Bad Empanada is. They aren't a serious person. <laughs> Way down till they hit Taiwan. All of these are Japanese islands. We aren't a serious I mean, person. if you look at Japan's uh. national defense strategy translated into English, you will see something that looks strikingly similar to what the Pentagon released. They're Wait, both what? really freaked out about China, and they both are ready to act in lockstep to deter a more aggressive <laughs> China in the region. So it starts up here with that island. I that love the idea that the security state in China and Japan, and, ja in Japan and, and America just like coincidentally wrote the, exactly the it's same so thing. It's so weird. It's just like, it just means they agree with each other, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I, it's just so odd that, yeah, I mean, they, they clearly are, uh, yeah. How many? They're just kindred many? spirits. Yeah, that's why, that's why Japanese people famously love American military bases on uh, the island. Um, that's, it's just like, they're just, friendly with one another they just yeah they have similar opinions um that's why they were like hey can you um after you are are done uh you know using the atom bomb on us twice can you please write our constitution <laughs> um that's what the japanese said 
an airstrip to be used by both Japanese and US militaries. Further south is Amami Island, where Japan has recently added long-range missiles and anti-ship missiles. Potentially, they're gonna add cruise missiles. These are missiles that they're buying from the United States. These are missiles that are definitely in range of the Taiwan Strait. Next to the Wait, chain so is Okinawa, <laughs> where the US <laughs> has a huge presence of tens of very famously beloved uh, <laughs> U.S. Body. military presence in Okinawa. They're like, oh, my God. <laughs> they love that. I only found out recently, you said you knew about this for ages, um, that Psy, Gangnam Style Guy. Uh, oh, yeah. Was, was like riffing about like killing American yeah, soldiers. Yeah, he called like American soldiers like baby killers. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. like, I want to strangle yeah. them. Oh, your mic is fucking ah! again. Sorry, that was me. I just touched it. Torching it. Wait, uh, is it good now or is it still fucked up? Just don't it's touch good. the cable. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thousands of troops already. Japan also has military bases here and is as an Okinawan person, the U.S. Army chooses like dogs and sex objects is sad as hell. Yeah, I was being sarcastic for the. I'm being sarcastic with most of the things I'm saying. But imagine what China would do. Yeah, but oof, yeah. Come on. Well, eh, when you talk about the the Chinese uh, and and Japanese relations. Oh yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe China boring. could be worse. I don't know. We I don't know if they if they got revenge on the mind, for example. But you know. Not modern China, at least, uh, as far as we know. I was deployed to Japan in 2014 with the Navy the week before I got there. Two sailors got drunk, couldn't afford their cab ride home, so they beat up the cab driver, put him in the trunk, and then drove the cab on base. Jesus Christ. Adding even more long-range missiles and electronic warfare units for military installations meant to disrupt and deny communication signals. On these two islands down here, they're adding even more long-range missiles, which could potentially be used to attack Chinese naval ships and aircraft. And Japan is playing- Guys, this is for d defense. This is a defensive posturing. It's classic. We see nearly 600 troops on Ishigaki as well. And finally, you've got this last militarized island in the chain, Yonaguni. It's the closest island to Taiwan. And here, Japan is adding more of those electronic warfare. By the way, if by some magic, okay, not saying that this is happening, not saying that this could ever happen. If by some change of heart, that the entirety of the Taiwanese population was like, actually, we're Chinese. What the Let's fuck are we talking about? Let's uh, let's just openly be, uh, you know, pro-China. If you think those missile bases would not be turned on Taiwan, which would now be like fully openly, uh, authoritarian, you know, openly authoritarian and Chinese, you're out of your fucking mind. Okay. Yeah. Well, who knows? I don't know. I saw, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's fake news. I saw some article maybe like a year ago that China was planning to build the world's longest like underwater railway um, connecting mainland to Taiwan. Um, Can't do that. <laughs> How is this not considered escalation? We are literally aiming our guns at them. Guys, it's defensive. Oh, didn't you hear what Johnny said? He said it's defensive because China coincidentally or not China, sorry, Japan and America have the same fear of China, coincidentally, verbatim. Yeah, it's the Defense Department. I don't know, it's just so sad. Yeah, like, an like when North Korea is doing defensive military testing, like <laughs> missile testing, they're doing it defensively, <laughs> okay? Oh wait, no, sorry, that's a foreign adversary. They're doing it to scare Japan because they're gonna they're gonna nuke America and then nuke Japan first, which is like kind of like uh, you know an extension of Hawaii, I would say. Uh, so that's why they're doing that. But when Japan is doing it and America's doing it, it's a defensive nuke. The nuke was just defense. Okay, first of all, America literally claims that the atom bombs were defensive because the firebombing campaign was significantly worse for Japan overall than the two <laughs> atom bombs. If you've never talked to like a, a, an American history nut, I don't know what to tell you, but there is quite literally a, that is literally the take. They consider like we it- We did something worse, so don't worry about it. Yeah, they, they, they have uh, uh, genuinely and openly uh, explained that like the atom bomb had to happen so that uh, the, the, the firebombing campaigns would stop. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's really good. I didn't get yeah. that. That's hilarious. That, oh, you, that's God. not even a joke, though. That's like actually the position. What people believe. ...signals or to listen in on their communications. You know, they're right next to China. Japan is also positioning more troops here. So this is the first part of our chain. 
And when paired with training that Japan and US troops are doing to simulate island and amphibious warfare, it sends a really strong signal to China that Japan is ready to respond if needed. This line also serves as like a physical Not barrier as an aggressor, that any they're Chinese responding ship to or submarine would have to pass through in order to access the Pacific Ocean. It's a line that Japan can easily control and monitor. And it also builds a wall of missiles. Any calculus that China is making... Dude, look at all of these cool little uh, missile systems that just happen to surround uh, uh, China. Like, look at that. It's cool that this chain of island just somehow belongs to like an ex-colonial power that expanded all across Asia. Like all these natural parts of Japan are just like coming all the way down to China. Yeah, and and also then the rest of it is like it, it's it's like pieced through all of the other allies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> surely, um, surely this is uh, you know just simply for defensive posturing. Keen on whether or not to invade Taiwan or to do anything in the region, we'll have to now factor in this wall of missiles ready to roll. Overall, this increased military presence on this chain of islands gives Japan, and by extension the United States, the ability to monitor communications and troop movements of China, preparing them to act quickly. And it also gives them the ability to pre-position troops and supplies throughout the region, which is a major logistical advantage. But all of this so comes with a massive words. price tag. So Japan, which is formerly a pacifist nation without like a <laughs> it, it, famously the the famously pacifist nation of japan where did they uh, what <laughs> no way dude come on okay look god damn i love listen 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 i love japan I don't love Japan that much to just be like, you know, famously pacifist. Wait, they mean, oh, they mean uh, like uh, for after World War II. Wait, they, they weren't involved in the war on terror or they surely they invaded Korea with the, with the, with the Americans. No? Or were they chilling the whole time? I, don't, I actually don't know uh, Japanese involvement uh, after World War II in other shit. I think they were, he said formally, not famously, formally. They're pacifist because of anime and they're so kawaii. Pacified, not pacifist. I mean, that seems uh, like a like a more realistic way to approach the situation. That is that that is they are pacified. That part is true. Uh, since World War II, that that is not uh, that is not fake. That part is real. So that does make sense is actually planning to double their defense spending. They're spending way more on buying weapons than they ever have before. And 97% of those weapons are coming from the United States. The island oh, chain strategy- 97% of their weapons are coming from the United States. Japan did not involve, in, involve themselves in Korea. Um, base. Japan military, while better than you think, is very restrained in its involvement vis-a-vis -vis Korea and Vietnam. Strategy continues down here with the Philippines, close to Taiwan and close to the South. Well, you know, you, you had the you had to tie that somehow. You know what I mean? They and then you the have Vietnam right here. here. You have Vietnam. They that's it. No gaps. The U.S. knows that it needs to bolster its presence here, but it's not as straightforward as it is in Japan. The Philippines was a U.S. colony for decades. It's a very sensitive history. And even after Filipino independence, the U.S. maintained a military presence in the Philippines until like the 90s. And then they eventually kicked out the kind U.S. Of as many saw it as just an enduring legacy of U.S. colonialism. But a more aggressive China has become a major threat to the Philippines. Now listen, I'm not going to go into like a full South China Sea thing here, but just know that China claims all of this as their doesn't the Chinese, uh, the uh, the the Chinese government, not even recognize the Maoist uh, rebels yeah. in, in the Philippines? Like they don't even give a fuck. Yeah, they're they're funding the. Uh, I think the Filipino government, fight them, giving them weapons. No, no, I don't think I don't think the China. No, I don't think the Chinese government is funding the the Maoist rebels. No, 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 the Filipino government against them. I think it was like a they did a little swapsy in like twenty sixteen or something. Let me see. Yeah, they. Johnny not getting into the nitty gritty of that, I guess, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like, guys, just focus on the issue at hand, okay? Which is that China is a threat and China is scary, okay? And 
you know, maybe it was a U.S. colony for a while. And uh, maybe since then we still use it as the, again, like I said, unsinkable U.S. aircraft carrier. He's right. They're funding the official government and not the Maoist rebels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their their position is uh, that... Their position is that they have, uh, like, a neutral... They're, they're neutral with the, with the Filipino government. Air maritime boundary. It's literally a line with nine dashes that some Chinese official in 1948 drew by hand on a map. This line blasts through the boundaries that the rest of the world recognizes as the Filipino territorial waters. So there's a conflict in the ocean. And now, on a daily basis, Filipino fishing vessels are harassed by Chinese military vessels who threaten them if they don't leave their waters. In 2022, China put a temporary stop to all fishing in the South China Sea, denying the Philippines' ability to fish in the West Philippine Sea, which is rightfully their waters. Hassan spreading fascist propaganda takes. America can be bad, but that doesn't make fascists good. Hassan coming out with weird takes. What have I said that's like... What did I just say? The map that Taiwan also claims is theirs. What, what, do, what have I said so far that it's like even remotely fascist? So we're trying to take over the world or something if we're an alien? What? But it's crazier than that. The Chinese Navy is like full blown just bullying the Philippines. They like show up with lasers to harass and blind Filipino ships. I mean, let's remember the Philippines is a much smaller nation than China and doesn't really have a Navy even close to what China has. So now they're in this impossible decision. They have to choose between giving up their sovereignty and fishing rights to their aggressive neighbor, China, or partnering with their former colonizer who also wants to repel China. And in this case, they chose the latter. China has pushed too hard. It's pushed the Philippines in the South China Sea, what they call the West Philippine Sea. The Philippines is planning to boost its military presence in the disputed South China Sea. It started in 2014 when they allowed the U.S. back in for the first time in 22 years. The U.S. presence will technically be in bases that are owned by the Philippines, but the U.S. can have troops, build barracks, and other military installations, and can have have pre-positioned supplies there as well. It's basically like the U.S. has bases there, but it's like, shh, it's actually the Philippines. And as part of all of this uh. that we've been talking about, in late 2022, they expanded their agreement, giving the U.S. military access to four more bases, bringing the total number of bases on the Philippines up to nine. And that's look how you they selected to put them. And then that that's how you do it. That's how you fucking close the gap here in the north of the country, strategically close to Taiwan, and helping fill their gap in their- Where is the mention of Vietnam? They also have issue with the South China Sea claims. Uh, I don't know if Johnny will talk about Vietnam, but Vietnam is also obviously very anti-China. Yeah. They love America. Island chain that they're creating. This now allows U.S. to have a military presence really close to Taiwan. The U.S. trains very closely with their Filipino counterparts, making them ready to respond very quickly to an invasion in Taiwan, while also repelling Chinese bullying of Filipino fishing activity. Okay, so now the island chain is filling out, giving the U.S. and its regional partners a solid blockade to the Pacific. And it continues all the way down around the South China Sea because of the U.S. presence. Uh, Johnny Harris. Yeah, We're watching about... We're watching a video about why it's uh, really dangerous. Uh, like China is really dangerous, um, which is why we need to have all of these missile systems directly pointed at it and uh, basically surround its uh, southern, but southern luckily, access to waters as best as possible. Luckily, America's there. Yeah, yeah, wow. you can join, dude. Wow. You guys love you guys love streaming, yeah. dude. Just fucking say it. I think also like luckily, like coincidentally, a lot of these countries' like defense papers are like identical, like word for word to America's. So it's good yeah. everyone agrees, you know. Like it's it's just it's cool. It's page. cool when it just works out like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's you it's know when your friend knows what you're thinking, you don't even have to say it. Yeah, I love that shit. <laughs> yeah, it's just perfect. Uh, if America didn't surround China, your freedom to stream would be in danger. Mark my words. <laughs> what, you mean streaming is over? <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, imagine a free Hassan just playing basketball every day. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Australia is turning into America forward operating base oh, too, by the way. That's actually the yeah. worst bit. It actually scares me. Like, we're, as soon as there's a war in Taiwan, we're going to be, yeah. <laughs> we're going to be, like, but at war. Also, the, the northern part of Australia is fucked. Like, Darwin is just filled with American all, bases. all American bases, all American uh, planes. Fucked? You mean, like, it, free. It free? Free, yeah. sorry. Free. Weird that you're saying that's it's the wrong fucked word. when it was, it, when it feels like it's free. And also, you have nuclear submarines. Yeah, so, we're getting them. 
that's yeah it. yeah we, we were in Vladivostok like next to a nuclear submarine base and we were camping and like when you dive down there the kind of like muscles you get in the ocean are just like five times the size of the normal ones that's a good thing yeah it's yeah. awesome and they're delicious it tastes like tastes like so a it's steak. gonna happen so if they can put one of those uh, nuclear submarine bases anywhere near me in Sydney that would be so good I'd be eating like the biggest juiciest seafood <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? It's great. Awesome. Tastes like freedom to me. Singapore. This is a very united front, but it doesn't stop here. I'll buy. The last part of the strategy is potentially the most significant, and it has to do with Australia, a country that is oh, also alarmed by China. We are so alarmed. The so there's this military pact between the US, the UK, and Australia. It's called AUKUS. What it means is that these three countries will work together to create a unified submarine force that will patrol the Pacific. Thank First, God. What it means is that yes. the U.S. is giving, giving nuclear submarine technology, its most powerful and yes. advanced weapon, freely to Australia. Wait, 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 wait no, we paid dumb amounts of money for those submarines. What do you mean? Free? It no, it's like free. Johnny Harris said it's free, so <laughs> he's... Wait, wait, wasn't it like 20 billion or it was 90 more. billion? It was fucking so much money. And, and like we, just, the best thing is, is like we just paid all this money and then for free, for free. Thank you. <laughs> you guys want Chipotle, by the way? Yeah. Yes. Oh, you want the same bur burrito bowl I that I've gotten? That. Yes, please. Also, you want you want three of the same burrito bowls that I always get? Yeah. yeah. I think if you pay taxes for equipment, you should have a right every single day. They should just do like a lottery, Where you get and them. you get to use it. So yeah. I should That's get brilliant. To that's I the love that. Summary. Okay, I, you know what? I I agree with that. Yeah. That would make things. That would also improve. Uh, you know, military spending on U.S. toys. Yep. Because everyone would be like, "Well, I want to rob the fucking submarine." Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's fucking so sick. Yeah. At least let me shoot a torpedo out of a nuclear sub. Uh, Wait, I, what do you reckon he's referring to when he says "free"? Well, maybe we'll find out. Or he just said it and he moved on. To our most powerful weapons. Take them, foreign country. And then no! the U.S. and U.K. Wait, wait, will base it's, it's submarines. We paid an insane amount of money, like really? crazy billions of dollars here, for this. Here are the designs to... But then it's also um, also just funny because with the big ceremony, fucking... That's joke, so weird. <laughs> it's like <laughs> just, dude. But, but then also, like, at the ceremony, Joe Biden just forgets the name of our prime minister after we forked over $368 billion <laughs> submarines. Like, oh, the, the, that Australian guy. <laughs> That's what you're insulted about? We are prime minister it's changes just, it's every just, year. It's just it's extra funny. It's just, ex it's just funny. It's just a, an extra little just like... You're like, if he, if he remembered it, I would be fine yeah. with yeah. this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's bad decorum, you know? Yeah, there's no He's, dignity here. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is great. Why would he say that? They're going to forgive the loans. Like, is that PPP loan? No, Hassan, don't you see the IP is free? The sub costs $368 billion. Wait, yeah. so we should be paying No, more. it was free. <laughs> it was free, and um, uh, it was free, and uh, that's why France was so mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because they the, wanted to give us free stuff. Because France was like, no, we want to give, yeah, we want to give you guys the free nuclear submarines. It's like really fucked up that America's doing that instead. <laughs> Like really messed up. Um, this is insane paying for the right to be like a American military base. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, it's like just, paying what? for a really expensive gun, and then be like, now you have to shoot the guy, yeah. the next guy. Now go go in. kill Chinese people. Yeah, like. yeah. Welcome to America, buddy. Uh, Club Aussies from a Canadian. Yeah, dude, it's so crazy. They just these nuclear submarines that fell off the back of a pickup truck. That's why they were. <laughs> That's why they're so so mint and so cheap. Are you referring our most powerful weapon to the block of nuclear waste that fell off the back of a pickup truck recently in Australia? Wait, that's the thing that I happened. thought that was like that's the most amazing reference like I've ever heard. No, I was just saying that's like a classic bit yeah. where they'll say like, "Oh, I got these radios, I got these stereos. They fell off the back of a pickup truck over here." That kind of thing. Yeah, I didn't realize there was nuclear waste that fell off the back of like, like a literally truck. like two months ago. Yeah, take them, foreign country. And then the US and UK will base submarines out of this port here in Australia. It's called Perth. Australian sailors will ride alongside US and UK sailors during submarine deployments. 
they will learn together, they will work together, they will share classified intelligence. What this means is that there will be a significantly larger number of submarines patrolling these waters. And remember, these are nuclear- There's nothing weird about that. Yeah. No, they're talking about them like they're fish. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're just swimming around. There's, it's actually so good that this is happening and that why is China even remotely worried about that? Yeah. Like, what do you mean? They're just, these are defensive nuclear weapons. <laughs> On their border. <laughs> yeah, what? Like, so odd. I love that what China's doing is saber rattling. Yeah. Like, this is, no, yeah, this is that's... just a silent submarine just cruising around. No <laughs> yeah. noise, no rattling. You can't see it. Shut up, China. It's under yeah. the water. What do you Australia want? Australia defending their trade routes with China from China. Oh, yeah. I think one of the one of the nicest things for us about being part of an American client state is that it gives lots of opportunities for satire. You, you out, we, we, it creates our jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Very funny. If, if America wasn't in control of Australia, man, what, what would we even... We'd have nothing. nothing. I'd have to go back to working a normal job. True, true. This is not funny yeah. at all. Yeah, I know. It's not funny it's because it's very serious. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, but that's why it is funny. It's Australian foreign policy. Not funny. I mean, it's pretty funny. But, you know, so, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing weird Our about submarines, that. submarines, which we made a whole video on as well. These things can be underwater for months. They can go on these long patrols over to Taiwan and the South China Sea. They can close up these key choke points, plugging holes in their growing line against China. And crucially, we can be pretty damn certain that a lot of these submarines will be carrying nuclear weapons, adding yes! yet another layer of deterring power what? to an already really <laughs> powerful line of defense. And if this wasn't enough, I'll just- Dude, this, all the ones that we already launched. You have to have, region. yeah, you have to have like, uh, you have to double up on the the defense to, to yeah. protect uh, the the region. Dude, nuclear weapons are the best defensive weapons. Everyone <laughs> like, knows it's never been used as a as an offensive. Uh, it's yeah. only it's only a, a deterrence measure. Yeah. And it's also Australia it's not a real threat. It's never even been, been used in this region. Yeah, and like no, yeah, no. America I is should. not. America has no interest in using their nuclear weapons no. on civilian territory, specifically on this map, like a little yeah. bit, just like a little bit. If you peek up a, a little bit on the map, you might excluded there. Yeah. yeah. It's just, well, this map, they've never used it technically. No. So what do you have to say to that? Okay. There's nothing else on the map. Also building Same. a permanent hangar for US B-52 bombers up here in the Tyndall Air Base in Northern Australia. These more defensive weapons <laughs> famously historically not used uh against again civilian positions no. b-52 bombers because they're so fucking large oftentimes are are uh they're defensive bombers and they are defensively deployed on civilian territory to defensively eviscerate civilian yeah. territory I thought the way the bombers worked is that, like, when an enemy plane's there, they fly like a little bit above it and then drop the bombs onto that plane. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the yeah that's how it works. Bombs. Yeah. yeah, that's how it works. U.S. bombers carry conventional weapons, but they also carry nukes. So now, U.S. bombers carrying nuclear weapons will have a permanent home in Australia. There's going to be a lot. <laughs> Are you talking about it like it's a puppy that you adopted? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, they, finally, <laughs> these cuties, these little cutie patooties will have Someone's a Someone's got to rehome these nuclear nuclear weapons, yeah. man. They're, they're out there. They've got no owners. You know what's so fucking annoying is that anytime there's like a proposition of making a nuclear reactor in Australia, massive petitions about yeah, it. Yeah, everyone's like, no, they're going to destroy our country. Yeah, yeah. The submarines are in the water, they're dude. In the water, doesn't matter. They're in the water. Come on. It's just, that's different. I wasn't, why are you promoting Johnny Harris? Everybody <laughs> wants everybody wants fat clams. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. like that's fat clams are fucking good. Oh, yeah, delicious. Also, what what happened? Didn't we watch a Johnny Harris like video a week ago and he wasn't that bad? He was kind of like, yeah. It's like, a, it's a, a give dodgy. and take. It's a give and take. He if he does like one kind of anti America video, he has to do like eight anti China ones. But also, he does like irrelevant stuff like U.S. coups. You know, forty years ago. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's safe. You're shit that to. shit that we've like declassified and and flexed yeah. on yeah. openly. Something the government says you're allowed to talk about now. Yeah. Anyway, that's it's. I mean, this is great. I think that the U.S. is the U.S. military is planning a for a war with China. Um, and then the entire video is like why these bases have to exist. Yeah. <laughs> and he literally said, "It's great. It's great. <laughs> it's great. Now there's nuclear submarines in the Australia sea. Australia yeah, gets but... nukes for free. Yeah. yeah. Come on." This is a very aggressive signal to China that the West is ready.
So now, if you look at the whole thing, this whole chain, you see how robust this presence is. This is what that military official meant by transformative. The military name for this is the first island chain, and it is at the heart of That's the Japan. US and its allies' strategy to counter and contain China. And it's easy to see that this island chain, while protecting a lot of different interests for a lot of different countries, really centers on Taiwan. A major purpose for all of this militarization, the missiles, the subs, democracy in Taiwan. The air bases, the troops, is to prepare for conflict in Taiwan. And this is where we get to the paradox of deterrence. You prepare to fight so that you don't have to fight. All of this preparation might yeah. be just what is needed for China to decide that it would be too costly to invade Taiwan. But yeah, dude, dude, totally. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, thank God. Oh my God. Thank God for the 385 billion Australian dollars, which is what, like 10 US dollars? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that were spent on the nuclear submarines so you could deter China from invading uh, what the United States government, not me, the United States government claims is just more China. Okay? That's not me saying it. No. That's Anthony motherfucking Blinken saying it. Okay? That's what every American State Department official has said on record since Nixon. I'm just saying they just see it as more China with like, uh, you know, a little bit different of a system. Other side of that paradox is that all of this looks an awful lot like overt escalation in a conflict. If you're China, this chain of islands is clearly your enemy trying to box you in to monitor your every move. A superpower from the other side of the world flooding your region with more military hardware to stop your influence. Yeah. It would be impossible for this plan to not contribute to a rising of tensions between the two superpowers. It's not impossible for it not to. It's like that's the intention of it. Yeah. For a potential conflict with China. How close are we to <laughs> to contain Beijing? Where are they trying to go? No, what are you talking dude, about? Dude, I'm so glad that these guys are here to contain yeah. Beijing. Like 95% of those weapons on Japanese islands are American. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shit take us on. Arrogant and ignorant. No, you're right. Beijing needs to be contained. That's why it's it's perfectly valid for... That's such a modest and not arrogant take. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm so... <laughs> no, I, I think like the only good take in the situation is if you say China are a bunch of genocidal, bloodthirsty monsters and all of America's allies who came to the conclusion that they need to defend democracy against Chinese anti-democratic interests yep. have to do so by purchasing metric tons of U.S. munitions. And nukes. And, and even <laughs> nuclear submarines. Like, you got to do that. That's a thing that you have to do. Thank God. I hope everyone can take a deep breath at the top of the hour and recognize that I am, you know, uh, still pro-America all the way. And modest. Okay, and and modest and not arrogant, finally. <laughs> finally, a non-arrogant take. <laughs> also, just the nukes, so overkill. Like, yeah, come on. You, what, the only use of a nuke is to blow up everything. A city. Uh, the okay. entire city. <laughs> no, first of all, these are nuclear-powered submarines. Oh. That means they can be underwater for, you know, months on end, Okay. Secondly, even if they had nuclear warheads in the submarines, let's say, maybe. I mean, that stuff is classified. Who knows? Yep. Who knows if they have nuclear-powered submarines with nuclear warheads in them? Um, <clears throat> they might. But even then, I present you with the alternative. Radiated clams. Yep, mm. I forgot about that. They, that taste clams. like steak. Yeah. I present you with the alternative. It's a defensive nuke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. It if you shoot the nuke at another nuke in the air, and then it it just, because yeah. just let China have Taiwan, Pepe. That's what. Yeah. This is this is all this is all done to stop China from having Taiwan, they which the American so which the American government claims is more China. But yeah. you know, but it's still, it's good to have this. It's it, yeah, it's yeah. just good to have it. Who amongst us does not need? A couple spare nuclear warheads in a, in a submarine. It's nice. Yeah. I do feel safer. That's the one thing as an Australian. It just, I feel like war is less likely on, in my country now that we have American yeah. bases and nukes. Definitely. I think the funniest part of this entire equation is that none of this shit matters. And the only thing that matters is trade. 
and every single country in this region, especially the United States of America and Australia, have incredible trade partnerships with China. Yeah. It's like their economy is reliant on Chinese manufacturing, and the Chinese economy is also reliant on U.S. purchases So and, and Australian purchases and vice versa. So ultimately, all of this shit is dumb as fuck. Yeah. Anyway, um, isn't the claim Taiwan is more China optics to make China happy? No. It's not optics to make China happy. It's just what they consider to be the truth, which they legitimately uh, have always just been like, yeah, we're just going to say that, but like we're going to keep uh, beefing up uh, the, the, uh, the island so that we can uh, you know, eventually use it as a fucking... Uh, as a weapon against China. There's no optics in that situation. It's called lying. Or if you're in the U.S. government, it's called strategic ambiguity, uh, which is another word for lying, okay? That's what it is. And it's not like they lie about this. They openly state it. Like I said, they just rename lying and say it's strategic ambiguity, okay? Okay. Anyway, uh, I forgot to run the top of the hour ad break, by the way, which comes at the top of the hour every hour. Um, oh, shit. Uh, the food is here, by the way. <coughs> um, Literally being strategically ambiguous. <sighs> ambiguous. Yes, exactly. Uh, here is the three-minute ad break now. There's no ambiguity there. It's not strategic. I just gave you the top of the hour ad break. Okay. Um, more YouTube apologies need to use strategic ambiguity. Anthony Blinken. <laughs> Anthony Blinken coming out with a fucking ukulele to be like, <laughs> toxic gossip train is finally here. You see the one I sent to Alexa? What? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I so I've been good. already watching it. Does that scare you? Hearing? This guy said I'm a Nazi. Manhood three protest. Hassan is a Nazi fascist. Oh, he got you. Yeah. When your girlfriend accuses you of lying, just tell her that you're doing strategic ambiguity. Okay. <laughs> like, excuse me, excuse me. I'm doing strategic ambiguity. Uh, to to to. <laughs> to better uh, recognize the interests of, of uh, you know, other people. <laughs> I'm more thoughtful of other people that I've cheated on you with. Strategically. No mistake. Here, take a week off. Aww. Because Let's appeasement see. works so well against Hitler. China today is a socialist... Uh, Socialist as Hitler NSDAP was socialist. If you travel back in time to 1938, would you argue for selling out the Sudendaland uh, or even more present? Do you agree with the European stand to build relations with Russia since the late 90s because we have relationships? There will not be war. Christ. Oh, it's just like he, after the first sentence, just take it for granted that China and, and Nazi Germany are synonymous. Yeah, like, you, you just have to, you have, well, and, same, and well, so. also, you know what else is also the same as Nazi Germany? Russia as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Russia and, and China are the same as Nazi Germany. Yeah. Just like Afghanistan was the same, the Taliban was the same as Nazi Germany. Vietnamese, uh, the, the North Vietnamese liberation was the same as Nazi Germany. And the people in Iraq were the same as Nazi Germany. Uh, it's just always like whoever we uh, choose to wage war against is the same as Nazi Germany. Make no mistake, it's it's never we're never obviously coping with like uh, a fuck ton of uh, global imperialism that we're engaging in. Uh, it's always just and and then trying to justify it by pointing to the one time that uh, U.S. military action was just. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's not that hasn't been like the way to basically sell every fucking war to every American nonstop. Yeah. Everything about nukes feels so damn spiteful. Like but if the I, enemy fires them, we're dead. I mean, yeah, it's called strategic deterrence. Mm. Mutually assured destruction. Anyway. What about mutually assured seduction? That's what oh, yeah. we should have instead. 
dude. Well, what's a, what's a submarine if not like a giant dildo in the a ocean? Giant dick, yeah. True. Filled with horny men that have been underwater for two months. Yeah, well, they're 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 the navy, so they're fucking each other. Yeah, let's yeah, be true. real. They're, I don't think they're interested in in women all no, that much. No, no. <laughs> there are men in China. Lots of men in China. Yeah, that's true. Too many. Mm. <laughs> Actually, not enough. You are you are so popular. <laughs> Well, you are so popular. Why don't you use your platform to end the disagreements between China and America? Yeah, why don't you do? It? Why don't you get G on this podcast? On, Dude, on, on this podcast. Yeah, on this. Because I love, I love war. That's why. Also, I love the idea, uh, the the idea that like in all of those circumstances, like America has to be the one doing the just war in mm -hmm. a defensive way, of course, always, and that like. We could never be the Nazi Germany in yeah. that circumstance. Like we, we here in the United States, despite all of our endless bloodshed for the past, uh, you know, post World War II era uh, contemporary history, could never be more uh, uh, similar to the the genocidal freaks. Okay. Between the two superpowers. Oh, he's just German. Uh, typical. Okay, never mind. <laughs> he's uh, yeah. Yeah, we get it, guys. You, you guys fucked up. I know all of your grandfathers fucked up, so now you have to constantly fucking, you know, toe America's line. That's the only way to, uh, you know. Okay, never mind. Let's continue. All this as the U.S. prepares for a potential conflict with China. How close are we to all-out conflict between the world's two largest superpowers. Chinese President Xi Jinping has already Whoa. called this a policy of encirclement and suppression. And let's be honest, he's right. Yeah, Whether you like it Johnny. or not, this is containment. Oh, Old school, Cold go. War style Let's containment. Say. It's hard not to see it when you look at this map. And the Chinese foreign minister said that it would literally be impossible for China to not fight back, to take a move that retaliates against this move. Which means that if the US and its allies aren't careful with all of this, it may send a signal to China that now is the time to invade Taiwan before all of this plan can fully be implemented. In that sense, this strategy could provoke the very conflict that it I mean, is trying to. So if they get one more nuke, then China's gonna be like, oh, that's too yeah, many. Done. But not the level we have now. That's that's fine. We can but deal I, with that. I love still taking it at face value that it's like America trying to deter China from doing anything. They don't care about like, Taiwan <laughs> at all. Like, 